Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about one of the most underrated anime series out there, Trigun. Now, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Let's get it. Trigun is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Yasuhiro Naitao. The manga was serialized in Tokuma Shoten Shonen Captain in 1996 with a total of three collected volumes when the magazine was discontinued in 1997. The series continued in Shonen Gasso's Young King Hours magazine under the title Trigun Maximum, where it remained until completion in 2008. The Madhouse Studios production aired on TV Tokyo from April 1st, 1998 to September 30th of the same year, totaling 26 episodes. In the USA, it ran from March 31st, 2003 until May 13th, 2003 on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim. Now, let's get into the story. Vash is an outlaw who comes to be known as the Human Typhoon, as destruction seemingly follows him wherever he goes. A bounty of $60 billion is then placed on Vash, dead or alive, the largest bounty in history. With his brother Knives missing, Vash spends the next 23 years hiding from civilization in order to stay alive. It is at this time two insurance agents, Meryl Strife and Millie Thompson, are assigned to find and watch Vash in order to prevent further damage wherever he goes. After their first meeting, the two women accompany Vash throughout his travels, much to Vash's dismay. During his travels, he ends up in April City, and upon learning that Vash's stampede is in town, the residents seek to capture him for the bounty as the city has been depraved and sunken in poverty due to the shutdown of one of the city's main reactors. In a desperate but foolish attempt to capture him, the city's mayor enlists the help of the Nebraska family, a sinister father and his giant half-machine son who had recently escaped from prison. Vash is captured without the Nebraska's help in a small saloon, but soon the Nebraska's reveal they have plans of their own for the bounty. In the fight, the bar is destroyed, but all inside manage to survive. Vash carries the survivors to safety and stands off with the Nebraska's, but the family stoops to lower methods by taking aim at the survivors in order to strike Vash off his guard. However, Vash thwarts this plan and defeats the Nebraska family with only six bullets. The city's wealth is restored with the bounty for the Nebraska's and repair immediately begins on the damaged reactor. The project is led by a young beautiful woman named Elizabeth who soon reveals she has an agenda of her own, that being to kill Vash. She lures Vash to the reactor, which she has sabotaged to seemingly prevent Vash from escaping. When Elizabeth locks Vash in the reactor, she reveals her intentions to kill him are not for the bounty, but for revenge. 23 years before, a three-year-old Elizabeth was a resident of July City when it was destroyed by Vash. Though none of the residents were killed in the destruction, they began to destroy themselves in their pain and suffering. Elizabeth's parents would be victims to this destruction, and she would be all alone for the rest of her life. In her flashback, she finds comfort in the arms of one man, a very familiar man. As Elizabeth leaves Vash to die, he miraculously shuts down the reactor himself before encountering Elizabeth outside as she pulls a pistol on him, intent on getting her revenge. Vash then tells her he remembers nothing of July's destruction only the ruins of the city when he awoke. Shocked, Elizabeth still begs in her sorrow for revenge, but suddenly recognizes a tearing Vash as the man who comforted her all those years ago. She collapses in the realization of the truth and decides to spare him. As Vash and the girls journey on, they meet a traveling priest carrying a large steel cross named Wolfwood. Although he appears to be just an ordinary priest, in an ensuing struggle with machines powered by lost technology, Wolfwood shows to be more by using his own skills in gunfighting. The two part ways after, but they're gonna meet again many times down the road. Two years after the fifth moon incident, Wolfwood tracks down Vash, who is living in a quiet town called Casted City, overrun by bandits, and informs him of a mysterious incident in Carcassus Town, in which the inhabitants disappeared without a trace and the only clue to the cause is in the name Knives, which is painted on a stone in the middle of the town. This causes Vash to take up his gun once more and leave his peaceful life to go solve the case. Soon after, Millie and Meryl begin traveling with Vash again, 
and the group begins a new adventure. Wolfwood accompanies Vash on a visit to his home seed ship, and once they arrive, they are met almost immediately with conflict by the re-emergence of the Gung Ho Guns, a crazy outlaw group, and are attacked by puppets controlled by Leonoff the Puppet Master, Hopper the Gauntlet, and the Grey Nine Lives. After a long struggle, the two defeat them with Hopper dying in a plant core explosion and Grey and Leonoff being killed by Wolfwood, with the latter being out for the revenge of the murder of a man named Brad. Soon after, Wolfwood consoles Vash after Brad's unfortunate death and the group eventually reach a town that is barred off and protected heavily after another incident involving mysterious disappearances with the town not allowing them to enter. The four then come in contact with a group of orphans living outside of town and stay there for a little while until they need to assist the city when it is attacked and it is revealed to be one of the orphans that was behind the entire incident, who was in truth, Zazi the Beast, a member of the Gung Ho Guns who Vash holds a gunpoint, threatening to shoot him and the orphans while Vash, the orphans, and the insurance girls try to convince him otherwise, and it appears as though it's working. But despite best efforts for a peaceful solution, Wolfwood decides to shoot Zazie to save Vash and the others, causing a falling out over both his and Vash's ideals over killing. After arriving in Carcassus, Wolfwood splits off from the others and encounters his teacher Chapel the Evergreen, and it is revealed that Wolfwood was hired by Knives to bring Vash to him, and is warned of an incoming battle. Later, Wolfwood questions his decision to kill Zazie, contemplating his life's history with violence and starting to come to grips that there may be other ways than killing while breaking down and crying, being comforted by Millie the next day. Wolfwood then apologizes to Vash over the fallout, as does Vash, but the moment is broken up by a gunshot from the sniper Kane the Longshot, with the two hiding out in a nearby saloon and making plans to take on Chapel and Kane with Wolfwood deciding to take on his former mentor and Vash going after the sniper, but not before Nicholas asking Vash what his real name is, with him replying that it's irrelevant. With the two of them reconciling and giving the other a smile before going off to battle. After a brief scuffle, Nicholas defeats Chapel and decides to embrace his comrade's morals and not kill him, walking away. But after his back is turned, Chapel, under the control of Legato, raises his punisher with Wolfwood doing the same and gunshots are fired but only from Chapel's gun, fatally wounding Nicholas, who once again consoles Vash for not being able to prevent Kane's death and informs him of Knives' location to which Vash questions, but he is already gone, leaving a blood trail to a nearby church. After a brief few words of regret over his life actions, Wolfwood passes away and is later found by Vash, who retrieves his Punisher gun and buries him, later informing the girls of his passing. The story continues to its main focus when Vash encounters Legato Blue Summers, who shocks Vash with the knowledge of his brother's survival by revealing that he is in service to Knives. It is around this point in the series that the secret of Vash's past is revealed. Vash and Knives were two human-like infants who were found by the crew of a spaceship. Within a year, the twins aged nearly 10 years in appearance and had much higher intellectual capabilities than normal. The reason for this was because Vash and Knives were not actually human, but intergalactic beings known as plants, which are used as sources of power. Witnessing the flaws humans possessed, Knives hatched a plan to kill the crew and eventually altered the course of the ship so it crashed, killing all humans while allowing the plants to survive. However, his plan is foiled by their adoptive mother, a crew member by the name of Rem, who sacrifices herself to reroute the ship's course, causing them to land on the planet Gunsmoke. Vash is disgusted by Knives' actions, and the two brothers spend the following years wandering through the deserts, observing crash sites, and the few survivors. Later, Knives finds a ship and gives Vash a revolver to aid in his plan, getting rid of all the humans in the planet. Vash becomes conflicted and shoots Knives in the leg. Vash then takes both guns and flees into the desert, spending two years alone. He returns to the ship 80 years later in search of any relatives of Rem in the databanks. There, he finds the last one alive known as Revenant Buskis. Buskis had studied plants and established a new plant theory in July City. Upon arriving in July City, he was greeted by Knives, who had slain Buskis, the very man Vash had come to speak with. Knives announced that he destroyed the last connection Vash had to Rem so that he could stop it with his foolish sentiment toward humans. 
Bash pointed his gun at Knives, and in the exchange that followed, Knives shot off Bash's left arm. Against Bash's will, Knives activates Bash's previously dormant angel arm, hoping to annihilate the surrounding town. However, Bash aims the blast at Knives, the resulting blast reducing July to rubble. Though there were no casualties as a direct result of the skirmish, as Bash's angel arm seems to only be able to destroy inorganic matter. However, there were indirect fatalities after the homeless citizens of July began to fight among themselves, turning the remnants of the town to hell. Knives has since made it his sole purpose of Legato's life to cause eternal pain and suffering for Bash through a cutthroat and mostly superhumanoid gang known as the Gung Ho Guns. In order to carry out Legato's purpose, the guns seek to harm Bash and eliminate all that's around him and who he cares about. This even results in the death of the entire gang, not by Vash himself, but either due to elimination for their failures by Legato, or taking matters into their own hands to forever slap Vash's mental health. Vash's struggles with Legato come to a turning point with the death of Wolfwood. In the next city, Vash encounters Mid-Valley the Horn Freak, who fails to defeat him, and uses his powerful horn to end things on his own terms. Though Vash is further scarred by these events, he continues to pursue Legato, but he refuses to kill him when Legato reveals his plan to allow Vash to do so in order to bring his ultimate suffering by being his first conscious kill. It is only when Legato threatens the lives of Meryl and Millie in the anime and Livio in the manga that Vash has no other alternatives and shoots Legato in the head, killing him. In the last arc, the girls bring Vash to a small town to heal his injuries, and Vash spends the next few weeks in torment over what happened. Vash refuses to confront Knives, knowing they would have to kill again as it would have to be their final battle. When the locals of the town learn of Vash's presence, they take him to the outskirts of town and drag him behind a speeding vehicle. Meryl comes to Vash's aid and stands between him and a frustrated gunman. Vash sees Rem in Meryl's actions, and his morale is revived, saying his goodbye for what may be the last time. Vash ventures into the desert with Wolfwood's Cross Punisher to confront Knives for the final battle, finding him in a small flourishing oasis in the middle of the desert. After the two exchange a docile greeting, they face off. The fight soon comes to a stalemate as both men come face to face with one another's guns. Knives, knowing Vash won't fire, shoots Vash, subduing him, then prepares his angel arm and fires it. Vash fights back with his own angel arm and negates the blow. However, Knives gains the upper hand and takes Vash's gun, giving him two angel arms. As Knives is about to fire, the voice of Wolfwood comes to Vash, telling him to use it. Vash then drives his hand into the ground and retrieves Wolfwood's cross punisher, firing it at Knives. Knives loses control of the angel arms as Vash shoots Knives in his shoulder and calves, thus subduing him and ending the fight. Finally, Vash emerges victorious, and after discarding his famed red coat and gun, finally comes to terms with Rem's death, declaring that while he will always believe in her, he will now turn to his own words for guidance. He leaves with an unconscious knives over his shoulder as he returns to the town where Meryl and Millie await. And that is the conclusion to the original Trigun 1998. With that said, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click that bell notification icon so you never miss another video, and until next time, peace.